Got a new video for you guys today. I took absolutely zero trades on the day. So I wanted to make a video for you guys to show you when to not take a trade versus when to take a trade. And I know a lot of people, they struggle with learning when to take a trade, when not to take a trade because their win rate starts suffering and they just start taking random trades on days that you're not even supposed to take a trade in the first place. So how do we identify when to take a trade versus when not to take a trade? Today, for example, on my pre-market live on YouTube, I literally said the market's not really looking that great on every single ticker besides like Nvidia and you know that says a lot. Why did I say that? Because of where we're at, right? If we go to the 1 hour time frame and we just take a look at what happened in this previous area because the market loves repeating itself sometimes, right? If we're stuck in this consolidation area right here where the market literally is just going back and forth for the way that i trade that's not going to cut it i trade breakouts i want to see nice reactive moves like for example look at this and then look at something like let's say nvidia in this time period right here very nice breakout to the upside we got a nice downside move whatever but you guys can see that nvidia is moving versus Q's. It's just stuck back and forth. You can't really trade that. You might be able to catch a nice downside move like in between that. But if we're coming back in that area again, and then look, look what happened when we came back in that area. Straight just back and forth, back and forth. That doesn't mean you can't catch a move, but like history loves repeating itself. And if we're just stuck in this little area right there, the chances of us getting a move is just not there. We want to see very nice reactive areas just like nvidia and nvidia you guys can see what happened in this area we straight consolidated right we consolidated in this area right here and we can't take a trade unless it breaks out but the breakout will be super nice i can't take a trade in between this the highest probability trade is going to be that 724 725 and that's exactly what we went over on tuesday and then it broke pre-market which sucks but that was a level that we're looking at and how well it played out you guys can see that right we only trade the best key levels i'm not trading anything in between this i'm waiting for it to either break out and hit 746 745 or i'm waiting for 724 725 a lot of people can't be patient. A lot of people can't sit on their hands and just wait for the best setups. They feel like they always have to trade, which is not true at all. You only want to take the best and leave the rest. I didn't take a trade today. Do you think I didn't want to make more money than I had yesterday? No. Do you think that I didn't want to print money out of thin air in 15 minutes today? No. Obviously, I wanted to, but the market is not. That's not how it works. It's not a money printer. Sometimes it is. But majority of the time, it's just sitting here being patient and waiting. Yesterday, I went two for two. And it gave me a perfect reason just to sit on my hands today and show you guys the difference in the price action. Now, with yesterday, when we took SMCI, for example, to the downside, you guys can see we took this right at the 765 area. And why did this react so well? How did this come down so well? That was a $30 drop and we made about 35% on that move. We waited for the best and then we left the rest. Where did this start bouncing at? Around that 765 pre-market, right? And then we had a nice move back down, reacted really good at 765, sellers were there, boom. We found a good key level and then we marked out this low right here just because that's where price went previously. And then you guys saw it just kept going. Right? It literally just kept dying and dying and dying, but that's where I knew we might start having some trouble, and that's exactly what happened. How did I know they were going to have some trouble there? Well, price action went there last time and completely stopped, and then it did it again the next day and completely stopped. So the chances of us having some sort of trouble there is a little bit high, so that's where you know, you're know you most likely to sell a good chunk of the position. Same thing with Tesla yesterday, right? that 196, 195 level. The reason why I took it, right? We drew a box here. I'm not touching downside on Tesla until it's like maybe 180s, 175, right? But let's just draw a box here. The only way that I'm gonna touch it is if it breaks out, which it did, caught the upside move, or it comes back into it and reacts very well. Because this could have easily bounced and came back up to a new high in that area, but it didn't. We were waiting for sellers to really step up. Yesterday, we traded that. And if we go back to yesterday, you guys can see what happened right 
we came up, came back down, came back up, starts bouncing out that 196, 195, and then sellers started really taking over. This is when we get into puts right at that 195. Very nice dollar and a half drop, 15% just like that. And then that's it, right? What happened after that? Came down, came back up, came down, came back up, came back down, came back up. This for a scalper is not good, right? Especially for how I trade, I trade straight breakouts. I keep it super simple. This is not what I want to look for, right? And why is it doing that? There's a higher probability of price action doing all that when you have price action looking like this, back and forth, back and forth. We're in the same exact levels, right? So if we already been hitting these levels, the chances of us, the chances of it doing something crazy at the same exact level is not happening, right? And Albert Einstein said it best. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Bro, we were back in the same exact area and this is the price action, this is the price action, this is the price action. No, I'm waiting for the best and leaving the rest. 196, 195, right? And then that's it. I literally can't touch Tesla again until it maybe gets back above that 205, 203 area. And then maybe at that 182, 180 level, that's it. But there's other tickers out there. This 677 on NVIDIA 676, I want to take that to the downside for a continuation. But as you guys saw, it touched it and then came right back up. Then touched it again, came right back up. So that 677, 676 area is still valid, but you want to make sure that there's enough sellers there in order to really take that to the downside because it's just doing all this stuff. It's just playing around. Why is it playing around? Because it played around that level last time, but once it breaks out, we have a nice move into that hopefully 670, 665. And then when 665 breaks, right, we can have another nice move in that area. But we don't want to mess around in between like that right there. We would have to be already in a position right there, right? I wouldn't put a level right in the middle of that. And I wouldn't put a level in here. I wouldn't touch this. I literally would not touch 735, 740. Like, no, I'm waiting for it to break out of this consolidation. And that's how you know when to trade and when not to trade. Spy, same thing. I'm not touching this whatsoever. Came down, came right back up. Look at all that. This was a super nice move, right? This starts consolidating. So it's like, it's very hard to catch a trade that's high probability if you're just in the same exact area you've been for almost a month now, right? You can't keep touching the same exact levels back and forth. It needs to break out. It needs to go in one direction or the other. And for the most part, you know, SPY and Qs really haven't done that. But Tesla and SMCI yesterday, they did that. And that was a perfect example in the difference to show when you should be trading and when not to trade. It has to look clean. It has to be clear price action and not like, oh, this is iffy or I'm not confident in it. No, we have to make sure that it's the best key levels or we're not going to take it. Don't force a trade. Make sure it's the best key level. Wait for it because people start forcing. They're like, oh, I'm going to get a level right here, a level right here when they're just forcing it because there's no other levels out there. Literally look back. If you think that's a good level or like you kind of know that it's not a good level, but like it could be look back on your previous trades that was good levels and be like, okay, how does this level look compared to spy? For example, oh, it looks like crap, right? It looks terrible. So I'm not going to touch it cues. Okay. Well, this 423 and a half look good, but what about 425? Oh, 425 doesn't look that good. Then don't take it. Don't force it. And let's see what 425 did, right? 425 without a pullback went up 30 cents and then just came right back down, right? It's just back and forth in this area. And we said this pre-market live. I said this on YouTube. You guys can literally go back today. I don't like how price action is looking, right? So then I'm just not going to take a trade. If it sets up, let's say this 50s broke with momentum, I would have took it, but I didn't. Didn't break momentum at all, and it was super slow in that area. And then NVIDIA was the only other thing that I was looking at, and guess what? It's just bouncing at that 677, 676 area. It's like we said it live that price action is not looking the best, and we're in this area to where it can do whatever it wants, but I'm there if the time of sales is really showing it at our key level. And if it doesn't hit our key level, then we're not going to take it at all. So hopefully this video helped you guys uh, when to trade and when not to trade. And I'll see you guys in the next one.